Hey, this is Dr. Barry. For the next few minutes, let's talk about a very important health and nutrition topic. A question, actually. The question is, is salt bad for me? Now, I think this is a valid question, a question that we should talk about and finally arrive at some kind of reasonable answer so that the average person who's eating their meals and living their life can know what to do and not have to keep worrying about this thing that just won't die. Millions of people limit their salt intake and their diet is so bland and boring, they hate it because they think they should limit their salt. Should they really be doing that? Valid question. Let's dig into that. Now, if you like the topic of this video and you'd like to see more videos where I combine science and common sense and our ancestry all into one uh, ball and way of looking at this, then please click the subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that every time I have a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first people to know. Now, let's dig into this. So, sodium is part of salt, sodium chloride. Sodium is essential for the proper cell membrane function of every single cell in your body. Okay, in order for cell membranes to pass particles in and out and chemicals in and out and elements in and out of the cell, it has to have sodium. That's not optional. Okay, your body controls your serum sodium level in your bloodstream very, very tightly because if it's too low or too high, it can be a problem. And your body knows this. So where in the world, if sodium is so essential, where did we get this idea that it's bad for us? Where did that come from? Well, you may not believe this story, but you can you can look at the links below and you can do some Googling and you can find out this is absolutely true. This idea came from one guy and then another guy put it into action for all the citizens of the United States. So the one guy was a doctor by the name of Lewis Dahl, and he was researching sodium metabolism back in the 60s and 70s. He did his research on rodents, either rats or mice, but not on humans. And he would give these rodents the equivalent of a hundred times the amount of salt or sodium that a, a, the average human would eat. And so it was a ridiculous amount of sodium. And when he did that, he would actually, it, could, it would make the rodents have high blood pressure. So we're not talking about humans here. We're talking about rodents. And we're talking about a dose of sodium 100 times greater than any human being would ever in their life eat. Okay. And so he published his results and it kind of caught on because a lot of scientists thought, oh, I bet salt's bad for you because we love it so much because anything you love has to be bad, right? And so he publishes findings. And about this same time in the 70s, there was a select committee in Congress that was trying to come up with guidelines of what United States citizens should eat and what they should avoid. And this was headed by the other one guy whose name was Senator George McGovern. You may have heard of him. And so in 1977, they actually did publish these guidelines, which had lots of foolishness in them. And it also had this salt recommendation to eat less salt. They wanted you to eat less than three grams of, of salt a day or sodium a day. And that was their guidelines. And so this came from one researcher doing research on rodents and using sodium levels hundreds of times higher than a human would ever eat. And then all of a sudden, it was part of the official federal government guidelines. Not kidding. That's how it happened. And so the hypothesis that Dr. Dahls and then Senator McGovern believed to be true was that if you eat too much sodium, it's going to increase your blood pressure. And that increased blood pressure might make you have a heart attack. And then that heart attack might make you die. And so therefore, too much sodium increases your risk of dying. OK, that's their hypothesis. But when you actually go back and look at all the meaningful research in humans, even humans with severe heart failure, you, what you find is, is that when you restrict sodium in human beings, they die sooner from all causes. Mortality goes up. And so the less salt you eat, the more likely you are to die. That's what the research actually shows in humans, multiple trials put together in a meta-analysis. And I'm going to put a link to that down below. And so I'm not kidding about that. That's actually the research that these guidelines, and still to this very day, your doctor or your healthcare provider may say, hey, you should really limit your sodium. This is the crap that, that they're basing that recommendation on. Not kidding. Okay. So now let's look at the common sense and the ancestral appropriateness of this question. Mammals, of which we are one, right? Uh, mammals will walk for miles 
to find salt. And they don't do this because they're stupid gluttons or because they're addicted to salt. They do it because they need it. They need it for their cell membranes to function properly, right? Any hunter knows this. And many a hunter has accidentally dropped a salt block back in their pasture or in their woods because they know that animals will come and lick that salt, not because they're stupid gluttons who are addicted to salt, but because they need that salt. And so they'll seek it out. We are also mammals and we also need salt like that. That's why we have salt receptors on our tongue. That's why we love salt so much is because we need it. Now, some people will say, well, we're, you know, we, we love crack cocaine and alcohol and sugar, but that doesn't mean we need it. That's right. Exactly. But we're not addicted to air and we're not addicted to water and we're not addicted to salt. We actually need those things or we'll die. OK, but now crack and alcohol and sugar, we don't need those things. And so that is, in fact, an addiction. You see the difference there? So if mammals will walk miles to get this salt, then it, may, it stands to reason that we probably also need plenty of salt. These animals don't just go and lick the salt block until it dis disappears. They lick it until their body says that's enough salt. And then they stop. And that's what we should do as human beings as well. We should salt to taste. Let me tell you about the electrolytes and the, the elements in our bloodstream and how much of each one we need, because I, I think you'll find this very interesting. So magnesium, anybody who is having muscle cramps knows how important magnesium is in their diet. We need two milliequivalents per liter of magnesium. That's a normal level, two, okay? What about potassium? That's very important. We need that as well. Definitely we do. If we don't have the right enough magnesium we or uh, potassium, we can get in trouble very quickly. We need four milliequivalents per liter of potassium, okay? Chloride, which is part of sodium chloride, we need 100 milliequivalents per liter of chloride to function properly. What about sodium? We need 140 milliequivalents per liter in order to have proper human function. So we need two of magnesium, four of potassium, 100 of chloride, and 140 of sodium. We actually need 70 times more sodium in our bloodstream than potassium in order for us to, be, to function optimally. You get that? That's important. I think that's once you understand that, it's hard not to understand this issue. So if you want to decrease your mortality, which is your risk of dying, if you want to increase your optimization, if you want to increase your exercise performance, then you need to eat salt to taste. If you're craving salt, eat salt. That's your body telling you you need salt, okay? Now, I've got links to the research down below, and I also got a few quotes down there from very intelligent people that might help you understand this better. There's a little share button right under this video, and if you click that, you can share this with one of your friends who limits their salt because it can harm their health. They're scared to death of salt, and you can help them realize, hey, dude, you don't have to be afraid of salt. It's good for you, not bad for you. Now, if one of my videos has really impacted your health and helped you live a happier, healthy life, you can click on my Patreon link. It's right down below and you can sign up very quickly and you can throw a buck or two my way so that I'll have more time to make more videos just like this one. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.